Hi dear uh, fans, uh, friends and subscribers. Uh, well, I am still under the weather. Uh, in fact, uh, I have some throat pain too. But uh, well, as you know, cricket is something uh, from which I can never ever stay away. Uh, and that's the precise reason dear friends and subscribers Despite my ill health, I am out here to do my daily cricket show as usual. So welcome everybody. And in this particular cricket show, the Champions League T20 semi-finals placings were semi-final placings were decided. Three teams have today, after the two clashes that happened today, one was uh, a dead rubber clash within Kings Eleven Punjab and the Cape Cobras, uh, which, uh, which Kings Eleven Punjab won it very comfortably by seven wickets. And the other match was a bit important because between Barbados Tridents versus Herbert Hurricanes. Barbados Tridents, who have been uh, doing a great job till now as far as the bat is concerned, they have been doing a great job. Jonathan Carter has been leading from the front, and today too he did the same. But Barbados Tridents, uh, for a change today, their batting really, really didn't come to the fore, and they folded up for 113 uh, to the Hobart Hurricanes. And for Hobart Hurricanes, it was a victory, which was a comfortable victory, uh, as uh, they got this victory by six wickets against Barbados Tridents. And what it did to Hobart Hurricanes is that they confirmed their semi final spot in the Champions League T20 tournament. And what a start for the Hobart Hurricanes. One has to remember that Hobart Hurricanes are the ones who are actually making their debut in this Champions League T20 tournament. And they are the ones who have now entered the semi-finals of the Champions League T20 tournament. So Hobart Hurricanes, uh, so after these two matches, uh, what's confirmed now is that Hobart Hurricanes, uh, Kings Eleven Punjab, and Kolkata Knight is already there on the top of the heap. These three teams have already confirmed their semi-final placings. And now we are waiting for the uh, match where every attention, all eyes, there's only two teams now that can actually go and take the fourth semi-final spot. And that semi-final spot would either be Chennai Super Kings or it could be Lahore Lions. Now Chennai Super Kings, if you look at the fixtures list here, they don't have any matches remaining, but Lahore Lions has a match against Perth Scorchers. So it will be interesting to see how what really shapes up. In fact, I'm trying to see uh, whether there is, uh, because as, as far as I know, <coughs> I don't see Chennai Super Kings having a bad team, but Lahore Lions definitely uh, have a match on 30th of September. Uh, tomorrow there is going to be one match that will be in Dolphins and KKR again of no consequence. So these are the four teams which will make it. So now, uh, as I've already given you a brief summary, now let's get on to the match. Let's first get on to the 16th match which happened. As I said, it was a match between Barbados Tridents and Hobart Hurricanes. It was a very important match. But Hobart Hurricanes actually won the toss and they decided that they will feel first. Well, the Barbados Tridents, as I said today, their batting was something which really, really let them down. And it was a very important match for the Barbados Tridents, uh, believe me. And Barbados Tridents couldn't really, really uh, do anything for themselves as they were all out for 113. Now, uh, the first wicket goal was McKenzie. Neil McKenzie was out for not to the bowling of Bollinger. In fact, the person who, uh, uh, the initially, it was Ben Hilfenos, uh, who has been bowling superbly, I thought, after his coming into the com making a comeback. Uh, and you know, uh, bowling very well in the making a comeback after injury, and uh, then bowling pretty well so far in this Champions League T20 tournament. He has been the real difference. And Hobart Hurricanes, Ben Hilfenos was the one who actually, in fact, Bollinger, Dougie Bollinger was the one who actually provided the breakthrough. McKenzie was caught behind for not, and then Hilfenos uh, picked up uh, two wickets. First, he picked up the wicket of Reefer for six. And uh, Munavira, the aggressive batsman, after hitting four fours in a knock of 18 of 16 deliveries, was also a victim of Ilfanos, and that made the score 26 for three. And when Franklin fell, uh, when Xavier Doherty, so once the once the Ben Hilfanos and Dougie Bollinger had done their job, uh, it was to, it was left to the spinner 
Xavier Doherty, and he went on uh, to capitalize on that um, on that um, blows that were provided by the Hobart Hurricanes bowlers as he started strangling the batsman. And Jonathan Carter, uh, who uh, who came in uh, as as number two batsman, was ha was absolutely watching all that happening in front of him. And uh, 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 actually, definitely Jonathan Carter. Uh, had to take a back seat uh, because he was not getting any support from the other batsmen. Uh, after that, Franklin fell, and then Xavier Doherty started weaving his web as he picked up. Jo uh, first, he picked up the wicket of uh, Franklin, a bowl for 12. Jason Holder was uh, into the pavilion for five of the bowling of Doherty. Hussein was um, dispatched by Bollinger for 12. Uh, Nurse was able to bowl Doherty for one, uh, and Doherty had completed. Some marvelous bowling figures of four overs, no maiden, four wickets for 27 runs. Uh, Mayors not out five. Uh, Embrith was, um, and then uh, once the tail enders were there, uh, Jonathan Carter realized <coughs> that there is no point uh, in staying at the crease, and it's better for him to show his brand of cricket, and that is absolute aggression. He definitely did that by using the feet against the spinners and depositing them for sixes and boundaries. Well, he did that, and Jonathan Carter finishing, uh, in fact, in a quest to actually get quick runs for Barbados Tridents because of the tailenders coming in. Jonathan Carter was himself a victim of the bowling of Xavier Doherty for 42 of 34 balls with three fours and two sixes. And Jonathan Carter has been having a very good Champions League T20 tournament. He has been doing his job to perfection, but unfortunately for him, the support has been lacking and especially today the support has been lacking. On other days we have seen there has been some support. The batting has been the forte for uh, Barbados Trident so far. More than their bowling, batting has been something uh, which, which has come very easy to them. But uh, today I would say the batting definitely let them down and they've all up 130. And also there, were a, there was a reason for that. Uh, the ball definitely tended to stop on this pitch. Even though one saw a greenish tinge on the pitch, uh, here uh, in Mohali, in the Punjab Cricket Association Stadium, uh, we saw that um, the greenish tinge in the pitch uh, made one believe that probably it will aid the pace bowlers. But what we saw is that the ball was stopping, and that was the precise reason left arm spinner Xavier Doherty uh, could be uh, uh, got amongst the wickets uh, pretty quickly. So let's have a look at the card. So um, Trident, uh, Barbados Trident is finishing with a very Low score of uh, 113 all out. Helfanos 4 overs, 1 minute and 14 runs in 2 wickets. Always has been uh, bowling superbly. 2 for 14 for him. Bollinger, Bollinger 2 for 27. Uh, Gulbis 1 over 2 runs. Shoaib Malik 3 overs, none for 20. Ben Lawlin 3.4 overs, no maiden, none for 22. And Javier Doherty 4 overs, no maiden, 4 wickets for 27. Now Hobart Hurricanes in their reply. 113 was a very low target to chase. But let me tell you, Hobart Hurricanes uh, didn't have it that easy uh, in the initial stages as uh, Ben Dunk uh, was uh, an early victim as in the very first over he fell a victim to the bowling of Mayors for not, which made the score one for one. And then after that, Andy Blizzard, who on this in this tournament one has seen that Andy Blizzard has been pretty lucky. He has been, a lot of catches has been dropped. Today too, it was a similar scene, but Andy Blizzard, I would say has not benefited from those drop catches and today he well he blitzed those runs one would remember probably in the first match but today Andy Blizzard couldn't capitalize and he was gone for 21 uh, to the part-time offspin of Dilshan Minovira of 24 balls with three fours after that Tim Payne uh, who was uh, staying there uh, was also a victim LBW ball Hussein for 18 uh, of 20 balls with three fours made 54 for three and then a Travis Bird fell attempting a big hit of the bowling of Hussein for 9 of 11 balls with 1 4. The score was 71 for 4 in the 13 overs. But absolutely no alarms. Uh, they had nothing. And, and the person ideally suited to uh, play in such a situation was at the crease. And that was Shoaib Malik at the crease. And Shoaib Malik was along with Jonathan Wells. And Shoaib Malik and Jonathan Wells saw to it that Hobart Hurricanes wouldn't suffer any further mishap here. Uh, by winning the match for the Hobart Hurricanes and not only winning the match but taking Hobart Hurricanes to the semi-finals of this Champions League T20 tournament. As I said, on their debut, 
Hobart Hurricanes in the Champions League T20 tournament have uh, made it to the semi-finals. Uh, that would have been a great feeling. Shreve Malik finishing unbeaten on 39 of 35 balls with 3 fours. Jonathan Wells was not out on 23 of 17 balls with 1 four and 1 six. <coughs> and Hobart Hurricanes won the match by 6 wickets. <coughs> Xavier Doherty for his uh, very good bowling analysis of 4 wickets for 27 runs was named man of the match. The bowling Mayers 1 over, no made him 1 for 9. Ram Paul 4 overs, none for 25. Ashley Nurse 3 overs, none for 16. Manavira 1 for 11. 2 for 25 for Hussein was a, was a new bowler. Embed 2.2 overs, no made him 1 for 19. 2 overs for 12 runs for Jason Holder. So that was the uh, story as far as uh, this particular match went between Hobart Hurricanes and Barbados Trinans. Now let's have a, a sneak peek at the other match which is between Kings 11 Punjab and Cape Cobra as I said was a dead rubber at that particular time Kings 11 Punjab almost made it sure that uh, before even before this match they had confirmed their place in the semi-finals and uh, well Cape Cobras were the ones who batted first and Cape Cobras let me tell you initially Cape Cobras if you look at the score they were all out for 135 uh, that really doesn't say much about what happened because looking at the start that the Cape Cobras got, uh, the, the toss was actually uh, won by King Salon Punjab. They inserted the Cape Cobras to bat. And Cape Cobras were off to a very, very good start uh, with, um, uh, with Richard Levy, the opener, and Hashi Mamla, both of them carving runs aplenty. And they had put on 60 runs in 6.3 overs with Le Richard Levy. Uh, dealing some uh, big blows by uh, depositing Parveen Awana, who was uh, listless, I would say. He was deposited over the mid-wicket region for sixes. Uh, then Hashi Mamla taking the cue from Richard Levy and moving inside the crease, uh, giving himself room by moving his legs. Hashi Mamla cracked Parveen Awana for a six. And both of them, uh, as I said, had got a... <coughs> I'm sorry about the cold here. Dear subscribers, Richard Levy and Ashley Mamla then added 60 runs for the first wicket. So that was a good foundation laid with uh, Richard Levy. <coughs> sorry, Amla was the first to go. As Karanveer Singh, uh, the leg spinner, was the one who provided them the breakthrough uh, when Hashim Mamla was gone for 40. After that, uh, barring that opening partnership that Cape Cobras had, there was nothing to really write home about. Richard Levy, an, another one making 42 of 37 balls with two fours and three sixes was absolutely surprised. In fact, Richard Levy had just blasted a delivery past Maxwell and these are catches that stick and Maxwell actually put his right hand in front and, 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 and in sense he ju just put his hand in front and he got the, he got the catch. So as I said, the Cape Cobra's innings which, which started uh, in a real flurry of uh, boundaries and sixes with 60 runs added in the uh, 6.3 overs almost going at a clip of 10 runs per over uh, were not able to capitalize the other batsmen simply simply I would say they simply collapsed Ramela was out for 12 in fact there was a there was a situation where Hashim Amla uh, absolutely launched into Tissera Pereira's bowling and smacked him for five consecutive fours in a single over uh, and that, that really spoiled this Pereira's figures and he never bowled after that so in fact he bowled after that but uh, basically he couldn't bowl his full quota and Cape Cobras as I said other than Richard Levy and Amla there was nothing that the Cape Cobras would do once Richard Levy and Amla were gone it was completely uh, the match was completely in the hand of Kingsley and Punjab as their bowlers uh, started uh, getting wickets with Akshar Patel um, uh, bowling is um, uh, showing that uh, the spin is something that Cape Cobras don't take to it well and then Anurud Singh also bowled well he picked up wickets and each and every bowler really really uh, cut in uh, and picked up wickets uh, Ramela was out for 12 uh, Zyle was out for 13 of 17 1 4 uh, Dean Villas was out for 10 of the bowling of Parveen Awana of 6 ball 2 fours. Uh, Engelbright was out for 5, Kemp couldn't uh, do much, um, I was out for 2, Philander made only 5, uh, Peterson 2, Clean Will Duck. I thought um, uh, the Kingsland Punjab bowling has to be really, really credited. 
because I would say it was a good batting lineup that Cape Cobras had and uh, Cape Cobras definitely floundered against the spin uh, spin bowling of Akshar Patel Akshar Patel <coughs> bowling splendidly 4 overs no made and 15 runs in 3 wickets taking the man of the match award uh, Parvi Nawan as I said looked listless 4 overs no made and 1 for 36 Anurit Singh uh, well he looked impressive in his uh, spell of 2.3 overs no made and 12 runs 3 wickets Tisra Pereira got some smacking from Hashim Amla's bat, 2 overs no made in 1 for 30. Karan Veer Singh 1 for 23, provided the breakthrough. Maxwell 2 overs no made in 1 for 17. Kingsland and Punjab uh, trying to, in this uh, in the quest to uh, chase a score uh, which was not a challenging score at all of uh, 136 to win, uh, had it uh, pretty easy. In fact, um, uh, they had a good start with uh, Manan Bora and Sevak providing them a good start. Uh, but uh, later on, uh, Manan Vora fell. The first wicket to go of Manan Vora when uh, Peterson uh, took his wicket as he was gone for 23 or 15 balls with four fours. And then Virendra Sehwag followed him to the pavilion, but not before uh, hitting 23 runs or 26 balls with three fours. Again, a victim of Peterson. Uh, and then um, Maxwell uh, provided uh, a few big hits with uh, hitting two sixes. And his knock of 23 of 19 balls with him being bowled by Engelbrecht. And after that, uh, it was a pretty, a pretty easy stuff with uh, Ridhiman Saha, the wicket keeper, saying to it that Kingsler and Punjab will be winning this match comfortably as he remained unbeaten on 42 of 35 deliveries, 3 fours and 1 six. David Miller was not on 16 of 14 deliveries, 2 fours. And the match was all over with Kingsler and Punjab winning the match by 7 wickets. Looking at the bowling card as far as the Cape Cobras were concerned, Cleanville 4 overs went for 24, Vernon Philander 4 overs cost him 27 runs, Robin Peterson was the best of the uh, bowlers uh, in this particular uh, uh, the Cobras bowlers here, 4 overs on made and 19 runs and 2 wickets, Engelbright uh, was uh, one who really really came for some heavy tap from the Kingsland and Punjab batting when he leaked 42 runs of his 4 overs with 1 wicket, Mijima one over none for 8, Ramela 1 over, no maiden, none for 10, and Hashim Amla bowled one, one ball, which was hit for 4, and that was the winning hit, uh, which was done. And as I said, Akshar Patel, uh, for his very good bowling, uh, was named man of the match. So, that is as far as uh, the proceedings at the Champions League T20 is concerned. And today, as I said, once again, I'm going to repeat before I leave this cricket show today. Uh, dear fan subscribers, three teams have confirmed their placings. Uh, in the semi-finals of the Champions League T20 tournament. One is Kolkata Knight Riders, the second one is Kings XI Punjab, and the third one to confirm today with the victory over Barbados Riders was the test debutants, sorry, the debutants in the Champions League T20 tournament, Hobart Hurricanes, also making it to the semi-final spot. And now there is only one uh, semi-final spot to be decided, and that will be a toss-up, uh, in the sense that will be uh, decided where, uh, between Chennai Super Kings and Lahore Lions. So both the teams under real pressure and uh, that, that will be knowing probably day after tomorrow when Lahore Lions will be um, playing, a, in, uh, playing a game. Let me see. The, uh, I'm just trying to see the fixtures here. Uh, Lahore Lions, uh, I think they're taking on the Scorchers at Bangalore uh, on 30th of September. Well, uh, fans and subscribers, uh, that uh, really... Uh, brings uh, uh, that really wraps up my uh, cricket show for today. Hope you all liked it. Uh, see you all tomorrow with the uh, game which is going to be there. As I said, there's a game, but that's not of much consequence. Uh, the match is going to be between um, Dolphins versus the Kolkata Knight Riders, uh, which is going to be played at Hyderabad in Deccan. But whether it is uh, whether it is of consequence or it is of no consequence, as I said, cricket is something very dear to me. It doesn't really matter. As far as it is cricket, Ram is always there to talk about cricket. So thanks for your company and thanks for watching um, your cricket happenings in a very patient manner. This is your host Ram signing off for the day by saying good night. <laughs>